everyone. If you could move down a little bit closer, there are seats here and there's plenty of room. That would be just great. Um, I, I want to tell you a little story. Last week, um, Don Green and Maureen were here for a little event in the louder. Okay. Well, I don't know how I can do louder. <laughs> Microphone closed. Oh, like that? Good. All right. So la last week, um, Don and Maureen were here to listen to a, violin, a young violinist that they have mentored since he was just a young uh, lad. And um, Sandy and Joan Wilde had just returned from uh, their trip back east. And when Don saw them, he said to them, welcome home. And I feel very much as if this event today is a welcome home for all of us. This wonderful Green Music Center project that all of you have been part of for so many years and we really thank you for coming. Um, on, on December 21st, Ed Stolman brought Joan and Sandy Weil to the Green Music Center. On January 3rd, less than two weeks later, Dr. Ruben Armagnana and I were sitting in their living room, and the rest is history. And I'm going to turn it over to Ruben Armagnana to introduce the Wilds to you and to talk about the significance of what this gift means to the university and to the community. Thank you. Thank you. You know, one of the things that I'm always interested in is how close a classroom behavior is everywhere else. In a classroom, most people don't sit at the front. <laughs> and neither do in church. And uh, believe me, you are not going to get a question, and the test is going to come later. Uh, but we are taking attendance. Uh, and all. But first, I wanted to welcome um, and all of you, and more important, I wanted to thank uh, all of you for uh, being in this uh, voyage uh, around uh, the NK uh, and your strong, strong participation. Uh, every so often, somebody makes me uh, look good <laughs> in front of my bosses which are the trustees of the California State University. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, Don Green uh, made me look very good. And he keeps uh, making me look good. And yesterday, uh, Sandy and Joan Wilde also made me look good. And I have got today uh, a lot of uh, congratulations and thanks. And I don't deserve them. People like Don and Joan and Sandy and you are the ones who really deserve those uh, congratulations. Uh, I'm just the guy who put the pieces uh, uh, together and, and likes to keep uh, the cement from getting either, either too dry or too wet <laughs> and able to be flexible. But yesterday, uh, a number of years ago, uh, our Board of Trustees uh, named this entire facility uh, after Don and Marine Green. And that's where the word Green Music Center uh, came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a great time when we did that. And then yeah, yesterday, the uh, hall and the lawn and the commons uh, were named after Sandy and John Wilde uh, for their marvelous uh, contribution. Uh, to the Green Music Center and to the completion. Uh, given their uh, contribution, we will finish the whole by December 31st, the year 2011, according to the Reform Gregorian calendar. <laughs> to be sure you are in the proper calendar. If not, you can really play with numbers very well. Uh, and then the uh, lawns and the commons will be completed a year uh, from now. 
but more important than that gift uh, is their and yours uh, contribution to making this happen and to believe that this is a place that our students and our community truly, truly deserve. One of the ideas that we had uh, a number of years ago, uh, Marnie, who has been not only my wife, but my partner, uh, from day one when we were in Tanglewood, is that we believe that there was a place in a public university in California to blend together uh, music, performance, and education. And that has remained the core of this project, putting together education. This is, we're not a symphony. Uh, we are a university. And bringing together performance, education, and music. And doing this in a way that will show our students, now and in the future, that excellence is obtained. And so hopefully that one will inspire them in their studies and in their life. So if you work hard at it, if you are smart about it, if you are patient, or if you are tenacious, my mother just died a few days ago, and she always claimed uh, she didn't call that I was tenacious. Uh, she always said, and there are a few of you who will understand what she meant, that I was cabeciduro, our head. <laughs> <laughs> and I do believe that one of the things I want our students to be is hard head about searching for excellence. And so hopefully this will inspire and people like the wild Don Green, and all of you will also be able to inspire our students so that you can believe in something and make it happen. And for that, we're most uh, appreciative. Um, this has been a terrific, terrific uh, uh, piece, and there's a lot more to be done. Somebody said to me a minute ago, uh, what are we going to do now? <laughs> uh, well, I have to finish. We are, you know, we need still to match uh, $4 million to complete the comments. We should do that tonight. And we should do that tonight to see how it works. <laughs> you know, I can lock these rooms. <laughs> and in order to get out, you have to make, somebody has to make a major contribution. That's, see, the things I learned in Cuba. I still <laughs> And the growth of a university it never, never truly ends. It's a continuous job. And we'll be glad that you have been with us during this job. And will be with us for time to come. Uh, one person who has been extremely, extremely helpful to us it has been our congresswoman. And she has been supportive of this university and this project uh, since she got elected. And she was one of the first people I met in Sonoma County. Marnie and I went to the Veterans Memorial to a uh, wine fair, uh, you know, the, the Sonoma Fair. And uh, Lynn was a candidate. Uh, that's when we first met. And she asked me, uh, you know, how are you, etc. She always thought that I would be a devout a Republican. I did. And uh, I told her so that I was probably one of the three Cubans that were Democrats. <laughs> and, I, uh, and the two others were, uh, were not give the voice their names publicly. Uh, and she was very surprised uh, since that time. But I had grown in, in New York and Louisiana at that time. It was very Democratic. 
Well, she has been with us and be her supporter, and she's here today, and I'd like to introduce her to say some words. Lynn? Thank you so much for including me tonight in this uh, event. And I just love being here in the hall and in, in, in this facility. I, I thank you, President Armanyama, for uh, your leadership. And I, I thank you, uh, John, Joan and Sandy Weil, for uh, this last finishing the job contribution. And I can always thank Donna and Maureen Green because they started it. But you talk about people that make you look good. I was Don Green's secretary in 1969. <laughs> <laughs> That's the honest truth. <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> we got a lot older, buddy. <laughs> and our community thanks you. We, we, we thank you and we are grateful for your investments and for your time and for this amazing center. It's been a long time coming for the completion of this facility, which will provide a boost to our economy and add so very much to Sonoma County's appeal as a destination for art and music lovers. Imagine having our own Tanglewood right here in the North Bay. I can't uh, wait to enjoy the many concerts and to bring my grandchildren here over the years that are in front of us. They too will learn a lot from this center. Uh, I want to say just a few words as long as I brought up children about the importance of investment in the arts. This is a commitment. It's a commitment that has begin with, that has to begin with our very youngest children. We have to educate the whole child. That means their schooling is incomplete unless they're getting art and music and, and drama as part of their whole education. Uh, just getting instructions in core subjects like math and science is important, but it is not enough. We have to teach them and give them the proper appreciation for music and arts. It's critical that their brains are developed in the right way, and it's critical with art and music that they become well-rounded people when they are adults. That is a full education. Unfortunately, with so many budgetary pressures in our schools, not just here in Sonoma County, but not just in California, but nationwide, uh, arts and music education are often the first things that are chopped away and are put on the chopping block. And I think that's tragically short-sighted, and it must change. I have a bill that I'm reintroducing. I introduce it every two years which would provide grants to strengthen instruction in arts and music, as well as foreign languages, civics, geography, uh, physical education, uh, and other subjects that are just being ignored in our school system. They've been overlooked, and they must stop being overlooked. As we move towards rewriting the Elementary Secondary Education Act, which uh, is called No Child Left Behind, but for those of you that don't like that title, we're certainly never going to call it that again. <laughs> uh, this is one of the things that I'll be fighting hardest for, and that's art and music back in the schools. And finally, I'll add that if you care about the arts, you must also speak out for the National Endowment for the Arts, the NEA. Not every artistic person is lucky enough to have the backing of friends as generous as Donna Maureen Green and Joni, Joan and Sandy Weil. Joni's okay. Joni, I know. <laughs> uh, private philanthropy has done so much, but they can't do it all. And uh, we have to keep our museums open, our opera houses and concert halls vital and vigorous, and uh, the NEA is a place where we can support that will help that because there are many, many talented, creative people out there who depend on our federal dollars to continue to enrich us culturally. And uh, one way to support them is by supporting NEA. So I thank you again. I had to be a little bit political because that's who I am. <laughs> but I thank you for, for inviting me and letting me join in and uh, celebrate uh, 
these wonderful people that have done such a wonderful thing for all of us in this community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. Joan and, and Sandy, we'd love to give you an opportunity to say words. It's just great to see all of you, and I want you to know that Sandy and I have moved around a little bit. We've lived in various and sundry communities, but we have never, I don't think, experienced a community that is so involved and so giving and so caring and who reaches out and makes people feel so much as home as you all do. And I want you to know how much we really appreciate that. And I have to disagree with you, even though you're my new boss. <laughs> but, Everybody does. <laughs> but I really think that thanks to you, Ruben, and, and all the adversary problems you had, and you stuck to this, and you worked on it for 12 years, I mean, really, you are to be congratulated. And to Don and Maureen Green, really, um, thank you, thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be here. We would not be here, Sandy and I would not be here. So we came at a very, very good time because we saw the actual dream in reality. I mean, very rarely do you get an opportunity to do this, and um, it meant a lot to us. And even though we were a little unsure of ourselves in terms of the acoustics, we had a good feeling about the Green Music Center. And um, we're thrilled to be here, and we're thrilled to be part of this community, and hopefully to help build it and um, make it a destination. And now I'm going to give this mic to my husband, because he's very patient. <laughs> but really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all for this opportunity. We really appreciate it. Let's And one thing I was thinking as Lynn was talking about how important it is for uh, culture and education and arts in the school and somebody here said to you what do we do next so you know maybe somehow or other we can do some kind of reach out programs once we get this together and reach out to the public schools and to the kids there and um, see what we can do about that thank you well Jeremy talked about how everybody made us feel and uh, I think that we've never met nicer people that uh, I mean even when you go into a store and they don't have anything they tell you, they tell you where to go to get it I'm not used to that where I live so, uh, it's I and mean, we do forgive you for the last 11 days but, um, they really when we when we came out here and, and made the first visit to uh, the Green Music Center we saw something that really could be fantastic. And uh, when you think about the 12 or 13 years of hard work and the money that's been invested, and even when things went slow and the fundraising slowed down, you never did anything that was, you never took any shortcuts. This place has done everything right so far. And uh, to have created something like this, which when you think about what this is gonna do to Sonoma State University, and, and with having culture like this, which the students can all participate in, the number of people that are going to want to come here is going to multiply by a lot. And the kind of students that you're going to get and, uh, and, and what it's going to do for the, for the school, I think, will be phenomenal. But it's also going to be, I think, great for the whole community because when you can think about the wonderful people that you have here, the wonderful climate, ha ha ha, that you, that you, <laughs> that you have here. Uh, the, the wines don't change, those are always very, very good. Uh, and you add to that, that this can be a great cultural destination. And, and really, it's gonna be up to us what happens to this center. And if we can have the vision that is just nearly as big as the vision of what you've created. I think we're gonna have a destination that's gonna be unbelievable for uh, this community, the business that uh, this will bring to the community, the people that are gonna wanna live and work 
in, in a place that will have culture like this. This will be a world-class destination for world-class people to visit world-class people. And uh, I think that's uh, what's the fun of it. And uh, for Joni and I, uh, you know, it's not really about money, because Joan convinced me that uh, shrouds don't have pockets. <laughs> for those of you that haven't made that decision yet, it's really true. <laughs> And then she convinced me that it's very difficult to control something from the grave. And I, I think that's true too. So it's, it's really great to have the opportunity to participate in what you all have been working on uh, you know, for so long and be, be part of it and be welcomed by everybody to be part of uh, our being able to help contribute to uh, making this center what it really can be. And, uh, so we're really thrilled to be part of it, and uh, you know uh, we've spent a lot of time. Just uh, my wife is uh, doesn't like to talk about herself much, but uh, she she was the she is the chairman of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. She's been the chairman of that for nearly 11 years now. She's taken that organization to uh, having the recognition by uh, Congress of being America's ambassadors to the world. They're really wonderful people. Uh, and it's important to sell tickets, so I just want everybody to know. Uh, Alvin Ailey will be performing at uh, Cal Berkeley uh, starting on uh, Tuesday, the 29th of March, and they'll be here through the 4th of April, and uh, there's still a few tickets left, <laughs> but, uh, but they're really great. They're, they go in like Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Joan helped build uh, a building in Manhattan that is the largest building for dance in, in the whole United States. And this building has really changed the whole community where people can walk by and see people dancing. We've reached out to uh, the young people, to the kids in school, to teach them how to dance, to even get a person my age to come there and uh, uh, try and learn a little bit about uh, how to dance, uh, but I can't do my I can't get my leg over the bar <laughs> anymore. But, um, anyway, we're, we're thrilled to be part of the community. We're thrilled to be part of this venture, which I think is going to be an incredibly exciting one uh, for all of us, and it's going to make us all very, very proud. And thank you for really creating something. Jay Abbey, who's the co-chair of our fundraising campaign, has a few words that he would like to say. Uh, of all the people in this room, that are being thanked for the 13 year, 14 year journey so far. The couple that I'm the happiest about thanking this evening are the Wilds. It's been the first time in several years that when I place calls over the last 24 hours, people actually answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I tell you, it's giving me my life back. <laughs> it's wonderful. We are delighted to hear about, of course, the recent gift, and, and yet we all know uh, that we have some more to go. We are going to make it. Uh, the Wiles gift gives us enormous momentum, uh, re-energizes the, the finale campaign. Uh, we perhaps put that title on the committee form three years ago a little bit too soon, but now we really are in the finale campaign with the $4 million match, uh, and after that, uh, finishing out Schroeder's Hall. Uh, our, first, uh, our first goal, of course, is to meet the match, and we're going to continue that work uh, under uh, Patricia's leadership with the development office, and uh, the, uh, uh, the new governance uh, uh, organization that's being created, as well by uh, Ruben and the university, to help, uh, help them manage and lead the Green Music Center. So I simply want to add my thanks to uh, you, Joan, and Sandy. It's, uh, it's really remarkable. This room is full of folks who have been on a long journey, and you have helped us get the ball on the one yard line, or the half yard line. So we are almost there. Thank you uh, so much. We're delighted that you're all here tonight as well to celebrate this truly momentous occasion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Jay. Um, I, I have to say that um, last night I didn't sleep very well. At the end of the day, I finally read the entire Press Democrat article and saw at the bottom of the article that it said, Patricia McNeil, Vice President for Development, is confident that we can raise $4 million in the next three months. <laughs> Sandy, I think that was a setup. <laughs> but we, we see how quickly the wilds can act, and they have shown us that it doesn't take time. It takes inspiration, resolve, and taking action now. And there are, by the way, pledge forms on the table outside when you leave. Uh, but before we do a, I, I want to do a toast to the wild, but before we do that, we have the first ticket <laughs> Joan and Sanford I. Wild Hall on it. And uh, I have a few. We have, we have, I hope enough of these printed up that you can all have your, your souvenir ticket, the first ticket. <laughs> All I have is just a little bit of water left in my glass, but I hope that you will join me in really three toasts. One is to Don and Maureen Green for starting this. The second is to Joan and Sandy Wild for getting us really almost to the finish line. Thank you so much. And the third is to all of you in this room who will help us get to the finish line. Thank you so much. Thank you.